<laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bobby Guy Films, the best bow channel on YouTube. Ooh. So lately, as most of you have noticed, I've been doing a lot of these how to save money, beginner videos, you know, for ammo, gear, decoys, and I figured, you know what? Why don't we do guns? Because guns, your shotgun is one of the most important pieces that you will ever own as a hunter in general, no matter what hunting you're doing. So that's what we're gonna go over today. Well guys, this is just my two cents and my tips for you guys, for, for you know, either the beginner or the, the hunter that has been doing it a few years, looking to buy your first or next gun. This is just my two cents on the comparison of a $300 gun, what, what it will do for you, how long it'll last, how it'll perform, how hard you can be on it compared to an $800 gun. So $300 versus $800 and what I have found out personally through owning these guns and with two of my examples right here that we're gonna use and I'm gonna tell you all about. So. Let's go. I'm going to start off with the cheap gun. This is a TriStar 12 gauge. The reason why I am going to start with the cheap gun is because I have literally used this gun for all it's worth. Right now this gun in many different reasons and variations why and as to how if that makes any sense why this thing will not even operate in the field right now. It, it, it'll shoot singlets out but i guarantee you every shot this sucker will jam now before you guys get out of hand real quick this is only because i've completely used this thing up for how much ammo i've ran through it for the number of years and everything else so i am not discredit discrediting this gun at all guys this gun served its purpose extremely well. For $300, I got my use out of this gun. Now, I still have the option to go and rebuild this gun. We'll get into what is all messed up with that here in just a second. So guys, this gun has served its purpose well for about three years. Now, the last year, real, you know, season, season and a half, I have dealt with uh, for one, the worst thing is not having a charge handle on the bolt. So no charge handle here. Royal, royal pain in the butt. I lost this charge handle literally the second time I used this gun. It just flew off. So, for the last year, year and a half probably, yeah, probably more than that. I'm trying to sound a little better than what it actually is. I have carried around a flathead screwdriver and used it as a charge handle, carried it around in my pocket. I received a lot of hell about it but it was funny at the same time. So if you guys have watched any of those old videos of where I use the dang screwdriver on this gun, I threw it in a couple of them. Leave a comment down below because it is freaking hilarious and you need to go watch them if you've never seen them. With the charge handle not being there and the misfiring and the jamming, this thing does not cycle well at all, fellas. Uh, it was a big joke all the time. You know, all, all the buddies would be like, Bob, you bring your tool kit because literally I'd have to have a damn tool kit in the field with me to operate this son of a gun. So to add how much I was, you know, just used this thing, I have shot thousands upon thousands of steel, steel rounds out of this thing. Uh, any gun you shoot that much for three years is gonna wear. Now, depending on the price and quality of the gun, I'm not saying price declares quality all the time it doesn't believe me i've had some awful remingtons in my days the nitro mag was the worst gun ever made but as i say that price does determine quality so it doesn't but it does there's there are bad models of of a lot of different name brand guns out there some of them have had flop runs at, at certain models, just like the Nitro Mag. I, I know a lot of people that had barrel bending issues with the Nitro Mag. So uh, if you guys ever own the Nitro Mag, drop a comment below and let me know if you had a barrel bending issue because me and my buddy Wade both had the same problem during the same time with the same gun. It's ridiculous. So first main problem was the charge handle, misfiring and jamming. The kind of, you know, second, third 
the wear is just ridiculous. This thing, I don't know if you can see it, but the wear is just horrendous. I mean, it has grooves. I clean my stuff, guys. I clean it every or every other weekend, every or every other hunt, depending on how dirty it is. If we're in a field, if we're in a pond, if it's full of dirt from it being windy or whatnot. But the pl the the plug, the the shell plug here, this little stop where your spring, it's you know in front of your spring. I don't know the terminology all that well. But it's made of plastic. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Let me go this way. But it is completely worn through. Like literally, that is completely worn through. I couldn't put another shell in there even if I wanted to. So what I'm getting to guys is, my experience with $300 guns, the TriStar, some Mossbergs even, I get about three to four years of hard waterfowl use out of them, guys, before they just start going decrepit and, and end up just kind of turning into junk. So you get what you pay for. So all of you hardcore waterfowlers out there, the beginners, you may not know, but all of you know that waterfowl hunting is extremely hard on shotguns. You're always having to have your gun near or leaning on a tree or near the dirt in the dirt in the mud the water the rain the sleep the snow all that junk it is very very hard on guns now i am not sponsored or any way have any ties associated with franke but this is my franke affinity i love this gun uh you know when i broke this gun out of the package. I'm trying to find my words here because I love this thing. I want to describe it right. Just by looking at the bolt, how the bolt's made, it's a Benelli style bolt. You know, the, the round circular action ones. I don't know all my terminology. Like, I don't claim to know all my terminology when it comes to guns. But uh, I can claim them well. I can, I can fix them well the whole nine yards. So, But like I said, just taking this gun out of the box, examining it, checking out the little features of it uh, just seeing the quality of this gun compared to what i was used to automatically i was like holy crap this thing is freaking legit it's nice i'm glad i bought this gun price point guys so 300 dollars. this puppy runs about 800 bucks reason why i bought this guys is because bar none i didn't ha I, I could not afford a black eagle 2. i still can't afford a black eagle 2. I just can't. So I wanted something in that six, eight, seven hundred dollar range that was gonna be the absolute best bang for my buck. So my buddy Adam, he has owned an affinity for five, six, seven years. I don't know exact, but he swears by it. He cleans it every or every other time after a hunt, depending on how dirty the gun is and what we did. And it literally has never misfired one time for him. And I mean that. He will swear by it. So I was like, you know what? I trust Adam. I'm gonna go buy me one of these freaking things. And I did, man. And I am so super glad I did. Let's get into the little differences of what is uh, extremely noticeable between a $300 to $800 gun. I told you about uh, the ejection handle flying off. This thing, you can, it's pressed in there nice and firm. It's not gonna come out. You have to pull it to obviously bring the bolt out but it's not wobbly like that one obviously was. Sorry guys, I got a fly attacking me here. Second of all, you can see that plug, it's red. So guys, besides, you know, the little, the little features like this, you know, billet plug, some other things that I'm really not gonna go over, is when you tear this bad boy down to clean it and you're used to tearing your $300 gun down like this TriStar, uh, just looking at the quality inside this chamber is unreal the the bolt completely i mean it's like it's like comparing a maserati and a gosh dang civic you know it, there, there's a huge difference here i can't go over i don't have enough time in this video to literally cover everything and tear these bad boys apart i just want to give you guys some guidance on what you're going to be spending your what you're going to get out of your money as far as three four hundred dollar gun i know i've repeated myself a million times but you get what i'm saying so to kind of wrap this thing up, uh, I know I didn't give a lot of, you know, exact attributes as to what is different, pulling out the bolts and all, but I want you guys to understand that 
throughout my years of hunting, I've hunted with a lot of cheap guns is because uh, being young, that's really all I could ever afford. I never had the, the lump sum of cash to go spend $1,500 or 1200 bucks, which I've probably spent well over that now. I know, well, actually I know I have. I've spent probably 2500 three grand on guns rather than just buying a nice one off the get-go. So, my suggestion to you guys, is if you know you're gonna be doing, especially waterfowling, if you're gonna be waterfowling for the next five years, you're like, this is something that I'm not gonna stop, I've already done for two, three years, and you're looking to get that new gun, save your money, guys. I'm serious, save your money and buy you a Franke, buy you a Benelli, buy you a Browning, buy you, buy you a nice gun. You know, uh, the Stogers are even pretty good. Buy you a nice gun because Going through guns, just the whole process, you gotta spend, you know, sales tax adjusts on them things every year, blah, blah, blah. The excuses go on and on, but essentially you're gonna be wasting your money the more you have to buy new guns, you know. So I recommend save your money, get you one you want, and you know is gonna last you and gonna be reliable for five plus years. Why I say five plus years, guys, is because a lot of the cheap guns that I've had have never lasted. I don't think I've had a gun last over three years. Two to three years is all it's ever done me good for. I wanna throw this in there real quick. If you're a beginner duck hunter, if you're not a beginner at all and you only hunt once or twice a year and you know, eh, that's all I'm gonna really be doing is once or twice a year, then you can get away with having a cheaper gun that's gonna last you five, six, seven, eight years because you're not using it, using it as much. Sorry, I'm stuttering and all types of crap. If you only hunt once or twice, which is fine during the year, you can get away with that cheaper gun that's gonna last you a lot longer. So rate of use, and uh, price and quality. You, you figure those things up, guys, to uh, pick your the best bang for your buck that you can. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna get up on out of here. Go check me out on, uh, go follow me on my Instagram. I'll leave it right here. Go check me out. I'm always giving video updates and story updates and letting you guys in on my life and blah, 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 the trendy thing to do because you know it's so cool. Guys, go follow me there. Uh, the trailer vids are coming. I am picking up the trailer today, so they will be coming. Hopefully the first one will be up Sunday. So I'm gonna have a video coming Friday and Sunday. So keep a lookout for them. I want you guys to uh, come on back now. Remember to hit that subscribe button because we're gonna be loaded with foul the rest of the summer, the season to come, and every season after that. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy your, what is this, Monday, Tuesday, this is, I'm filming this on a Tuesday. Enjoy your Wednesday, because that's when this thing's going up. Have a good one, guys. I'm an idiot. Peace.